For those of you who don't know me, I'm Nick. I started Nick's TV Repair about a decade ago, and since then we have fixed over 27,000 devices. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to fix a dead no power for an XBR-85X850G, and the issue is due to a defective power supply this time around. Now, the customer brought in their TV, and they had a massive power surge lightning strike that both completely killed the main board and the power supply. Their original parts we were not actually able to fix. This part, however, is a replacement we bought on eBay, and of course, it came in defective. So that's what we're gonna be showing you how to fix today. In order to properly test the power supply on the bench, I'm gonna be using this jumper connector, which is essentially jumping our standby voltage to our power supply on command line. If this power supply was functional, when checking in DC volts the filter caps, I should not be getting 169 volts. I should be getting closer to 380, 390 volts. And of course, that's not the case. So let's identify why. To trigger this power supply to turn on, we are sending the three volts from the standby voltage to the PS online. So let's make sure that the standby voltage is present. According to the legend, pin number five is our 3.3 standby voltage. One, two, three, four, five. That's gonna be the third row on the bottom from the right. And when I do my measurements, I am getting zero volts. So that is why my power supply is not turning on. I don't have a standby voltage. But we're gonna disconnect the power supply from power. This is the back of the connector, which luckily is labeled for the pin numbers. So that's two, three, four, and pin number five right here, which is our standby. Let's follow that trace, comes down here. We have a fuse that jumps it to this trace. We'll keep coming down, keep following it, okay, to here. So that brings us to this jumper over here. Then over here, we have a capacitor. And right here, what is this? That is a transformer. These two legs are for a transformer, which are connected to one another, and then leads to these diodes. So if we flip the board over, that's gonna be D950B, D950A. So these two diodes right here, now these diodes are directly connected to the 3.3 volt standby voltage, and because they are shorted, that is why we are not seeing it. So in order to fix it, we are gonna to have to replace those. And also just so you're aware, I have fixed a lot of these power supplies 99% of the time. That's gonna be the issue unless you have a very severe power surge or lightning strike. For the removal and replacement process, we are going to start by adding some fresh solder to all of our joints. This is to ensure that we have good flow. And we're gonna use our desolder pump to remove the bulk of it. And I'm just gonna do a quick touch up with my desolder wick here to remove the rest. Now if I did my job correctly, I should be able to now bend the diode pins. I'm using needle nose pliers for that. So if we flip the board over, oh, actually it looks like one of the diodes has already come out. And there we go, that's both of them. So the original diodes are reading SB260. So that I believe is a two amp 60 volt rating, and that is exactly what we have and what we're gonna use for replacements. Now these diodes are fairly cheap. You should be able to get them on eBay for like 10 to 15 bucks, but we're also gonna have them available on our website as a repair kit, and I'll have a link in the description down below for that. All right, for the installation, I'm gonna bend the pins. feed that through. Now for orientation, of course, that does matter. We do have a line here, and of course, that will be the negative, which is also marked on the diode as a silver or gray marking. So definitely make sure you are putting them in the correct orientation, or they will go bad immediately as soon as you power up the board. So I'm gonna pull on the legs a little bit on the backside and bend them out. And now we can solder in our replacements. We'll cut off the leads. 
All right, if I did my job correctly, the unit should now boot up once we plug it in. I never removed the jumper connector, so that's still plugged in and it just clicked. It was not clicking on before, so that's a very good sign. We're gonna change our meter from the continuity to DC volts. Let's see, are we getting our 380, 390 we're expecting? And we are, 393 volts. So that does mean we have fixed it, I believe. We're gonna rotate the board. We're gonna do a quick check on the third pin at the bottom from the right, which is our standby, and we are getting 3.5 volts. So that does confirm our standby is fixed by replacing those two diodes. If we wanna be extra, we can also check out our LED driver output. So pins one and two are gonna be our positives. So pin one, 136, pin two, also 136. We also have pin 25, 27, 28, which is the TCON VCC 12 volts. So that's gonna be power going from the power supply to the TCON board that also feeds the panel. So we wanna make sure we have 12 volts there. And that's gonna be this pin down here and we are getting 12.8 volts. So our panel is getting power. And finally, we have our pins 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 are the regular 12 volts going to the main board. That's gonna be this one here and also getting 12.8. So that does confirm it. All of the output voltages for this power supply are now present. They were not before. So now we can go ahead and sell in the TV and get a successful repair. Part of the reason we made this video is to show you that even if you're buying a part that has been live tested in a TV, it might actually arrive defective and non-working. That's why I always prefer the repair services, especially from Nick's TV Repair. Obviously, I'm a little biased there. If you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like, subscribe for more content, and thank you for watching.